My name is Chella Man. And my name is Aaron Ruth Phillips. And we have known each other for about five years now and have since grown into ourselves together. In private, we've often held a lot of conversations about what it means to be a disabled, trans, BIPOC artist. We have wanted to bring these conversations we've had in private to the public and candidly dive into our truth. I'm forced to take up this space because you've never seen this black trans joy before. One of my most euphoric experiences was having top surgery. Being a disabled person, a trans person, you're constantly advocating and problem solving. And the truth is, when we are the authors of our own story. Be careful what I say because anything could come out. <laughs> no, babe, but let it come out. Nothing is off the table. You might recognize our iconic guest today from her starring role on Netflix's 13 Reasons Why, the hit show, or her Time Magazine interview with fellow trans legend Tori Peters. We have the illustrious Tommy Dorfman here with us today to talk about all things coming out. Thank you for oh, having baby. me. This is such an honor. No, baby, it's our honor. I Please, love. it's my honor to have you. Thank you for being here with us and for sharing yourself with us today. Thank you. You both look beautiful. You I also feel like we are gorgeous, in queer baby. heaven right now. I so. literally feel like you both look like angels. Like oh. we're, we're, we, we didn't even correspond. It's we literally didn't this coordinate way. this. This is crazy. Yes. It's so rare that I get to have a conversation with friends in this environment. Usually it's someone I don't know. Same. So I'm like, be careful what I say because anything could come out. <laughs> no. no, babe, but let it come out. That yeah. is the point. We are here to turn it out. Exactly. Period. We're Period. literally going to be talking about coming out. So me saying. Yes. Do it. I've done it a few times. <laughs> <laughs> Likewise. Let's start with your Time Magazine interview. Your sure. iconic, legendary Time Magazine interview. Oh, wow. That literally <laughs> changed the world. Seeing you live your comfortable, honest truth, to see you that happy really brought me a lot of joy. And you said something that I'm still thinking about to this day. You said, you said a quote that said, it's funny to think about coming out because I haven't gone anywhere. Mm. Mm -hmm. That really resonated and stuck with me. I love that so much. Thanks, guys. Yeah. Do you mind like elaborating sort of on that yeah, notion of yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I've always been here, like it's always been lit, <laughs> like I'm that chick, like, you know? Like, I mean, you know, I think it's not like, I knew there would be a response to that reintroduction of self. I didn't anticipate it to be as expansive as it was. It wasn't necessarily a secret. It just was, I didn't feel like I owed the world that part of myself. Mm. I felt like I needed to incubate and like, feel it out and understand who I was before I talked about it in any capacity. And, I, and, I, and then I was ready, right? And then, I, I, and then it was really clear and I was ready and I was in a relationship at the time that was a little bit more public than any relationship I'd ever been in. And I was getting misgendered a lot in like tabloids and press and I felt more and more that I was doing myself a disservice by not talking about myself and not clarifying my pronouns and who I am today and the, and the woman that I've, grown into, and, and I, was, I was getting really resentful at my public life because ultimately I hadn't told people who I was, right? Mm -hmm. I expected people just to get it in some way, which now seems silly, but at the time, as we know, it's, it's hard to be vulnerable and I don't, think we, I don't think we owe the world all of ourselves, especially as trans and queer people. I think we are allowed to pick and choose what we share for our own safety, um, but the pandemic happened. And I had to sit with myself as we all sat with ourselves in isolation. Very much so. And I had no other I had no other direction to go in other than this one. I was like, well, what am I doing living my life if I can't live it as myself? Like it's just not worth it. Tommy, my love, thank you for sharing yourself the way that you have been and telling us authentically so much about yourself and your perspective on what it was for you to come out. It really made me think about my own life and my own journey hearing you talk about your experience mm. because I too actually came out as non-binary and gender non-conforming for several years as a preteen before Same. when I was a teenager and I turned like 17, 18, I 
transitioned into being and identifying and presenting as a transgender woman. I knew who I was, but to make the people around me happy, I honestly said I was non-binary because I feel like if I held on at the time to my male identity while also being able to explore with who I knew that I really was, I could have a way of maintaining happiness within the people in my life and also mm -hmm. keep making myself feel seen. But I realized that I won't feel seen until I come out fully as a woman. I relate to that so much. I, re I really feel like I, I mean, I think trans and queer people feel this way all the time where it's like, I'm putting myself in an uncomfortable position to make somebody else comfortable. So, yes. so sacrificing yes. self for someone else's comfort is such an inherent part of being queer. And yeah. I think especially of being trans. On a very deep level, just goes back to what would happen if we disrupted other people's perceptions of us to a point where maybe they're uncomfortable, like what would that lead to? But it's interesting that you both came out as non-binary first. I also, when I was 16, came out as, I use the word gender fluid, but essentially mm -hmm. I was using I use gender fluid. fluid too, actually. You use gender fluid too? Yeah. Maybe that was like the term when, around that era. I was 16, so let me do the math. Eight years ago, okay. from now, so around the same time. No, literally eight years. I think we all rode that non-binary wave the minute we heard it. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I, was, yeah, yeah. I was just about to say that. Yeah. We're like, ooh, yeah. <laughs> that's closer to home. That's closer to home. Yeah. Well, I think a transition has a homecoming, you know? Like, when people ask True. me, well, like, two things. Like, it's not a destination. There's so many ignorant cis people who are like, so you've transitioned, right? It was like, <laughs> with this, like, it's in the past. And it's mm -hmm. like, well, no, doll, like, I'm still... It's very active, it's a verb. Like the body is still changing, okay. right? I'm still in puberty right now. But it, to me, really does feel like I've come home hmm. in a way that I'm really grateful for. What then makes it to you that you've come home? I feel the most like my child self, if that makes sense. Mm. I feel like That's beautiful. I used to feel like 15 years older than I was. And now I'm like, oh, I actually feel a little bit younger than I am. Um, and without being molded and formed by society, um, I think the, the autonomy of, a tra of being trans and, and, and medically or not medically, but actively living your true self um, requires fantasy, right? It requires performance. It requires figuring out what works for you and what doesn't. And I think that's why gender creativity is so important. And I think that's why fluidity is so important. And I think that's why people should be allowed to change their name 100 times if they have to, I agree. right? I agree. Um, to figure out what home feels like. I agree. I feel like cis people and the you know, more mainstream public can learn so much from trans people mm -hmm. because we understand change is continuous. Yeah. And it's not, you know, it's not what you look like. So the way you present, regardless whether it fits into the binaries or stereotypes of being, you know, a <clears throat> masculine passing person or a feminine passing person, it's really we truly understand what it means to be settled inside of ourselves. Yeah. You said in the beginning, actually, that I don't know if the world deserves to know who I am. So what Fully. changed? I wanted to ask you. I mean, there's still a lot the world doesn't know. Mm. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> sort of my day to day is very, very, very different than what I present to the world. Right. And I like to keep it that way. And the older I've gotten and the longer I've been working, which has not been that long, maybe like six years. Mm -hmm. So it really in the grand scheme of life things has not been that long. Like I'm still very fresh and very new, but I'm learning how to make that distinction for myself so I can protect a certain amount of like anonymity and personal safety and privacy while also having a relationship with the public in a way that services my professional life. <sighs> Hard balance. I went through like not wanting to do any queer media, not wanting to talk about anything queer. I think that for a long time, just in general, as a trans person in the public eye, mm. like all cis media wants to do is exploit you and your transness yeah. to an audience of people who don't understand you at all. Right. So for a long time, I didn't even want to do the interviews or the press about, you mm. know, that part of myself when I wanted them to see what I have to offer being a talent who happens to be trans. My celebrity came from my work as an actor mm -hmm. and it happened so quickly. A lot of decisions about who I was, which weren't true, were made for me. Mm -hmm. And I just kind of like let them be that way because I didn't know when to engage or correct. And I think that's why I did do the timepiece at the end of the day is because I was like, no, fuck it. Like, I don't want other people I've had like four plus years of other people telling me who I am. 
You wanted your personal autonomy. Yeah, I wanted to get, and, and if what is being trans if you're not autonomous? Right. right. I mean, that's what scares people so much, right? Absolutely. Is that we live our lives so authentically, and, and so many cis people don't. Mm -hmm. Right. I feel like we've all come into ourselves in very different ways. And Aaron, weren't you just on the street asking people about all this? I totally was. The other day, I made my way to Washington Square Park and talked to a lot of people about their personal coming out experiences. Would y'all like to see? Yes. Yes. Okay. What do you think of when you hear the words coming out? Diana Ross. <laughs> Most people think that coming out is a one-time thing. But babe, that's not the tea. Which is why I'm on the streets in New York City to get to the bottom of this messy misconception. Let's go ask people some questions, y'all. Their energy is always so good. So good. Hello there. Hi, Hi. love. Hi, sweetheart. Hi. My Hi. name is Aaron Rose. I'm here. Nice to meet you. It's so lovely to meet you. Have you ever had to come out about anything in your life? Um. Um, no, not really. I actually, I recently just came out to my mom as non-binary a couple months ago, so... Amazing! Yeah. <laughs> I came out as gay when I was 13, so seven years ago. Yo, Washington Square Park does get full rainbow. Is it, no, <laughs> Washington Square Park, you just eat during Pride, babe. It's that, 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 that's people. different, like... My parents were always like very accepting people about anything, so I've never really felt like I had to come out to them prospectively. That's beautiful that you have that support system that was able to just be like, we got you. Do you think coming out is a one-time thing? I mean, yes and no. Definitely not. Definitely not. That's a good question. Um, I feel like we're always changing and evolving. People who are out, you know, especially as a certain sexuality or gender have to come out every day. Sometimes I feel like, you know, maybe I don't have to come out to people anymore and I can just exist as myself and do what I want to do, do what makes me happy. In 20 or 50 years, do you think coming out will still be a thing? I think it will become a lot less necessary. I think it'll probably be more normalized. I, well, I hope, like... I'm out for too many. I feel like it's kind of timeless, yeah. if you could say that. Part of the human condition. Do you think it's part of the human condition? I do think, I think a version of coming out daily is kind of part of the human condition. Overall, I think it's not necessarily, like, a necessity. Yes. You know? Yes. And it might become obsolete, but I, I do still think that there's just going to be a long time where there's there's this presumed, like, uh, cishet majority. I just hope we can live in a world where people can just be who they want to be and not have to tell anyone or say it out loud. A lot of people brought up that coming out was not just like a singular experience for them. No, it no, no. It happened over and over and well, over and over Well, especially as a non-binary person, I remember like those years were really difficult because I feel like I was correcting people constantly. constantly. There are so many queer people right now who are coming together, matter of fact, to not just be queer, but to be queer in a way that unites each other. Mass community support is helping people feel empowered to even do that in the first place. We're just more unapologetic about it. Like, we're just out here living our lives. We really are. <laughs> like, we're doing the thing. Yes, like, we're doing, exactly. doing the thing. Yes, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for your amazing answers, baby. Thank you. Anyways. Thank you, honey. Enjoy your day, love. You too. Right. Thank you, honey. Oh. Mmm, glam! Amazing. <laughs> you absolutely Thank ate Washington you. Square Park breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Upon watching the clip, mm -hmm. which conversations surprised you both the most? I thought it was interesting how that one person had almost made peace with the fact that we are always going to live in a cisgender heteronormative world mm. because I don't believe that. I believe wow. that we can, you know, we absolutely have to acknowledge that that is the reality, the dominant reality right now, but there's spaces like this right now where that doesn't exist at all. So even though we live in a world that, you know, doesn't always acknowledge our true existences, we can create spaces that do. I mean, to me, like, the future is trans, mm. right? Yeah. Watching these people, I think, like, I could pick on little tangents here and there, but over the all-encompassing message to me across the board is that, like, the future, it's fluid, it's creative, it's, it's giving elevated.
Mm. Yes. <laughs> like elevated, like truly, <laughs> truly. Expansion. Because I think there's a lot people can learn from trans people, that cis hat people can learn. And, I, and, I, and I've seen that, in, and I'm sure you've experienced this too, if you have people from your past who you're still close with, or you're still, are still in your lives today, like the way that my transition has altered the perspectives of my family. Absolutely. Right? Yes. I think even like anyone watching someone come into themselves, whether that's through transitioning mm. and gender, just allows other people to be more themselves. Right. You can't argue with the type of happiness you see like a trans person living yeah. when they're authentic and they're grounded. Yeah. And they're in their in their truth. You yeah. both are glowing. And like, you're glowing. Awesome. Thank you. You're glowing, baby. <laughs> Y'all like make me feel better about the world that we're in. Mm. You really do. Before we go, yes. <laughs> I believe, Tommy, we have one last video question. Okay. Before you officially came to the terms of coming out, how did you know the moment that you wanted to come out? I guess, like, when did you hit the wall where you had to come out? For me, it was when I graduated eighth grade. I came out at my graduation. Terror. I wore like four white roses in my hair mm. and like wore my gown and went down the aisle. Wow. And everyone in my school was so confused as to why I would ever do that because they knew what I was trying to say. And I wow. went up on the stage and at the time, a family member literally came out and picked the roses out of my hair when I was up on stage receiving my graduation. Mm. It was like, it was really traumatic for me and I was pissed off the whole day, wow. but I knew that was my point where I'm like, no. It was when I was like 13 and, and in eighth grade and I was Aww. like, no, I can't do this anymore. I was a child being made to perform boyhood when I knew that I was a feminine child and honestly a little girl. Do you both feel like you really had to hit a wall and for you to come out? Like, does it really take so much extreme suffering to be able to step into our truths? It shouldn't. But it shouldn't, it does but I feel it did for me. Yeah, yes. I, I think it did. It really shouldn't, but it does a lot. I think my existence inherently like rocks the boat of society, if you will, or, yeah. my, or the industry I work in. But me as a person, like Tommy, mm -hmm. I'm not interested in that. Yeah. So <laughs> as much as I can like keep the peace in my life, I try to. Mm -hmm. I like being comfortable more than anything in the world, and you deserve that. Coming out is so uncomfortable, and so it, it, it's often taken a lot for me to do it, um, especially this last time, because mm. it, it felt so. It was the first time I've ever come out publicly, mm. in any way, which is why I was trying not to call it a coming out, because yes. I was like, because I, I didn't go anywhere, right? Like I really, I was really intentional about using my Instagram as like a visual time documentation. capsule documentation diary of a body in transition. I mean, a lot of why I've kept those pictures on Instagram and I chose to speak openly uh, to Time Magazine on like a global platform is, is that hopefully like th that discomfort that it brought me for like weeks and weeks and weeks after that mm -hmm. came out, that piece came out, um, helps other, and I know it has, it, I know it's helped other people. Yeah. I know I, like help, help, you know, I know that I've been in like PDFs of like teenagers who have like used my experience to help their family members understand who they are. And like that to me is an over, if I think about it too much, it like overwhelms me. Um, and also I'm really grateful, you know, and it's the same reason why I wanted to show up today and hang out with my friends and have these conversations that like are somewhat uncomfortable to have, but also in the coziest space possible is mm -hmm. in the hopes of, you know, one, two, 20, whatever, however many people seeing this, feeling less alone and feeling more confident in talking about themselves. I'm so grateful that we had you here and that Aww. we get to have these conversations. You are the truth, Tommy. You we are the truth. We love you so you much. You both are the truth. Mm -hmm.